When I was asked to speak about hope, the first Bible verses which came to my mind was Isaiah chapter 40. My study Bible states that chapter 40 is the beginning of the writings of the second Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, who wrote most of the 39 chapters, was active from 730 to at least 701 BCE. We don't know the second Isaiah's real name. He was a poet and a prophet about the time the Jewish community was allowed to leave Babylon and return to their homeland, Judea and Israel. This was about 539 BCE. Back in 2011, Senator Guilfords was shot in Arizona. Shortly after, there was a service which I assumed was done to try to bring some peace to the community. Janet Napolino, who was Secretary of Homeland Security at the time, read some or all of Isaiah 40. I thought it was courageous thing, this was a courageous thing for a politician to do. So I tried to understand what chapter 40 was about. I decided it was about God's power, and as long as God is in power, we have hope. Isaiah 40 is also Hebrew poetry. As a reminder, in our Bible you can tell poetry because it is printed in verses. It does, it looks different than prose. It does not rhyme and usually doesn't have the rhythm of stressed syllables which is found in the Hebrew poetry. There aren't any puns either, which Hebrew poetry has several. We do see paired versets in which the first verse expresses an idea and the second usually repeats the idea or enlarges upon it. With all that introduction, here is Ju Isaiah chapter 40. Um, the stanzas tend to compare the, fr the fragility of man and the power of God. And I'm going to be reading for the NSR NRSV, and if you have one at home, you can follow along. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Who has measured the stars, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weigh the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or has, or as his counselor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and the and are 
accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness compare with him? An idol? A workman casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts for it silver chains. As a gift one chooses mulberry wood, wood that will not rot, then seeks out a skilled artisan to set up an image that will not topple. Have you not known? Have you not heard? It has been told you from the beginning. Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who alone above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely as they are planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? Who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by name? Because he is great in strength and mighty in power, not one is missing. missing. What do you say, O Jacob? And speak, O Israel. My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In our present crisis with COVID, it seems to me to be lessening. I could be wrong, and there will always be new problems that come up. Still, we have hope as God remains in charge. I'd like to end with our last Sunday's prayer. Loving God, I left my prayer, I lift my prayer, prayer, pray prayers to you. I put my trust in you. Help me every day to trust you more. Amen. That's all there is, and there ain't no more.